did that teach you the whole software engineer side of it? Did you not know that before or yeah. did it just completely expand on what you already knew and it was perfect? I, I knew nothing going into that and it, it taught me the, the basics on like Pro Tools and just the basics on recording and Is Pro Tools and the software? Yeah. Okay. Um, and, and it gave me the tools just to kind of be able to go then, all right, cool, I know now enough where I can apply or not really apply, but I can go to a studio and be like, let me intern for you. Yeah, I know how to I do can some things. do enough to get by kind of thing. And yeah. then by doing the internship, then you actually learn a little bit more and you, you actually are taken under the wing of a professional. And, and by it's hands on. By being there, you you have the tools already and now you're just applying them and learning like way more in-depth ways of doing things. Hmm. So, And would you recommend that for all musicians who are kind of coming up and young and thinking about school or was that just something you wanted to know the technical side and you can get away with it if you're not interested in it you just want to do the performing side um like what 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 do you mean what would i recommend like if you're talking to a kid who's coming out of high school or in high school and he's another drummer yeah um would you even if he has no interest in being a sound engineer like would you just say it's that big of a benefit and helped your drumming out that much like um, yeah you should go learn that it's going to help you out a lot or is it or is that just something that you wanted to learn and you probably don't need yeah but um it's good to know for i got a couple answers for that i guess like i would just tell them like learn if you don't if you don't care about the in-depth if you don't want to be an audio engineer that's totally fine. Then just go be a drummer, meet as many different musicians as you can play as many gigs as you can and as many projects as you can go to other people's gigs and just be around, be in the scene all the time and always meeting people. That's mm -hmm. how you'll get gigs. That's how you network. Yeah. Just, it's all networking. It's all about who, you know, so learn, learn the basics, get garage band and get a little interface and just learn the basics so you can, you know, record some stuff at your home and send it to someone or make a YouTube video or that kind of stuff. Learn the basics there. You can learn that off of YouTube. But for somebody that actually wants to do audio production and be like an engineer, then I would say either go to go to a school and and try and learn it or just go and find all the studios in your city or whatever and try and intern at anyone that you can and just that's all you'll learn just learn through hands-on shit yeah. yeah have you ever talked to that guy are you still in contact with him the guy that told me not to go to school yeah. um every now and then i'll i'll talk to him but did you ever go work under him no i did not for him but i i took his advice and then it while i was in college i interned at a couple different studios and I interned at a at a church under a live sound guy and just tried to learn from real professionals and learn from people that this is their actual job so they must know what they're doing yeah, yeah. churches seem to be so many people come from churches and it makes sense I guess because yeah every church has like a band or some sort of musicians yeah. so i'm guessing that's a really popular way for people to start learning just oh, being involved at the church 100 percent, like I'm whatever not, church it is yeah i'm not a very religious guy you know yeah i have my own set of beliefs or whatnot but i um get into that another day yeah that's a whole different story <laughs> but when i was uh after my freshman year of college, I, um, like mega churches, like the really big churches that are, it's more of like a concert experience. Yeah, like what it, is it? Uh, Eagle Brook here Eagle now. Brook and those, there's a bunch of those types of churches and they're really p popping off and really growing now. And they, I interned at one of those under the sound guy and they just have like, that is such a great training and practice it's like a it's like a mini practice of of a gig every time yeah, and every and, single week and it's the way that they do it is so professional everything is timed out everything is um 
you know, they have a, they have a game plan for every service and it's like every minute is mapped out. Every minute is managed. Really? Every way and process of things of doing things is like done. It's as professional of like an operation as it gets. And by doing that, I learned a lot about live sound, but by being there and being with the bands and stuff, they're like, Oh, you're a drummer. Okay, cool. You ever want to play drums here? It's like, fuck yeah. It's exactly what I want to do is play drums here because every everybody's on in ears, everybody's playing to a click track. It's a it's just a what's really, a click track? So when you play live, um, most of the time people have like in ears, so it's just like headphones in your ear. Yeah, and instead of having a monitor uh, on the on the floor, that is a way to hear yourself because otherwise you can't hear yourself. So there'll be a monitor that blasts what the, the audience is hearing back at you so you can hear yourself. But now since the past 10, 20 years, in years have become more and more popular. And instead of having the floor monitor, it's just in your ears. And um, now people play with like a metronome. So they're literally playing with that in their yeah. ear? And so you can be Damn. really, really tight as a band. You can be very consistent. There's no rushing there's no dragging the tempo's all laid out so, so the click track's going and then there's little cues so it'll be like chorus two three four and really then you'll know like the chorus is coming up or intro two three four and it's just a guide in your ear the whole time that the audience obviously doesn't hear but didn't even know that yeah and so that goes on in your ears there's backing tracks you hear that in your ears you hear what you're playing um you can then customize like you'll have a you'll have a little mixer next to you and you'll be able to like have your own mix of what you hear in your ears so like i only want to hear bass the click track and the cues and a little bit of vocals and then that's like your own little custom mix for what you hear and so um by playing at the churches and stuff it gave me a lot of practice with playing live with the click and playing live with in ears and just a professional like show and like operation like this is how we do things this is the order of events this is when you're gonna hit the cues here and then and it's like you gotta know your parts coming in you know there's a there's a built-in crowd every week you know there's a live stream every week and it's just like it's a really good way to practice and kind of build up your live experience with a very low risk yeah because no one's no one's there to see you. But. Exactly. Everyone, I think, appreciates a great church band and a great church like music performance. But also, I feel yeah. like if it's not the greatest, yeah, they didn't come there for you. It's just like, okay, that's yeah, that's what they got today. Yeah. Um, that's a great. That's a great. It's uh, just a good insight. practice. Yeah. yeah, it's a good training in a way. And when you play, see, when I've just done some things on GarageBand, I do not like the metronome. It just bugs me. I don't yeah. know. Maybe I'm just obviously not a professional, and I should be using it more. It, no, it's it's definitely An a learning curve, and it's definitely something you have to get used to over time. Like yeah. The first time I ever used it, it was hard because it's just so unnatural. It's yeah, not. It feels not it feels robotic. Yeah. Like. Yeah, it's annoying. You want to jam. Yeah, it's 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 hard, especially when like in my band, I'm the only one that that uses in ears and I'm the only one that has a click track going. So for songs that a guitar player starts a song or bass or whatever, I have to keep the time like on a hi hat just mm -hmm. really quick so that they start the song at the right tempo so that way when everybody comes in, we're all it's not just chaos and uh, rushing or like so that it meshes tightly. So it's definitely like something you always just have to think about and always keep it in your mind and it, it needs to like become second nature kind of yeah. thing so it uh, takes time i'm sure it's just one of those things yeah you get used to it over time yeah um do you feel when you're performing so you said you're the only one who uses that yeah do you feel or well you, it depends you, it depends on the band my band i'm the only one that does that but other bands i play in most of the people are in ears most people are on click track but. okay the ones who don't do you feel does it get you off sometimes because you're so on fucking time and, and then the other guys maybe aren't so pristine um, that you're like waiting or they're early and you're trying to catch up? Some Sometimes. Um, but, you know, if they're playing to me and 
they're doing their job right, then they'll they'll be fine. They'll be fine. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. 